oh, I got this great idea for the intro, but we'll have to record it at the end. Oh, okay, Indigo. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, it's so cool. It's going to be the best. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we didn't actually film an intro. I, I love how you dubbed my voice with your voice, even though we live in the same building, and you could have just asked me. Like, why didn't you just ask? I'm right here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Game Gorgon. My name is Krug. I'm Indigo. And today we're here to talk to you about the Solarian. The, uh, it's the, um, uh, the, um, it's cool. It's the class that's making me debate between playing a mechanic or this in a Starfinder Let's Play. Yeah, it's a very unique, non-archetypal or non-stereotypical yeah. rendition of a class. Yeah, you could easily like extrapolate this to like movie references, but I could not easily reference it back to Pathfinder or D&D like Or tropes. any of the other RPGs that we've played. Yeah, I mean, other than Star Wars. Sure. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't played a Star Wars RPG. I mean, I guess you could like make it in Fate Court, but like that, whatever. It's cool. It's more unique than most of the other things that we talk mm -hmm. about. So let's get into it. Starting off, it's going to be seven hit points and you're going to get seven plus your constitution for your stamina. Nice. Your main stat is going to be charisma. Ooh. So that makes it kind of a very interesting kind of play because it is going to be kind of melee focused class, Ooh. or it can be. Okay. Uh, you'll, you'll see when we get into it. Yes, we will. For its skills, it has four plus its intelligence, and that sounds like a, like nothing, because it's not an intelligence-based sure. class, and four is the lowest number, but there's a lot to do with its skills. Sorry, you said four is the lowest number, and I'm just like, what about three? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be proficient with light armor, basic and advanced melee weapons, and small arms. I'm getting better at these lists. At level one, you're gonna get skill add -ups. You're gonna get to pick two skills and add them to the list of skills given to you by this class. Yeah, and uh, that's kind of what I was referring back to when I was saying four plus your intelligence yeah. modifier isn't a lot, but you're getting a lot of skill-focused things. Literally first level you're getting, hey, ta -da. add two of your choice. Uh, but it doesn't end there. There's a lot more skill-based abilities from this class. Nice. The crux of it. The meat. Yeah, is the Solarian Manifestation. Ooh. So you uh, kind of uh, have this ability, uh, and it is manifested in a small object that is approximately the size of your fist. Okay. That when not in use, orbits around your head. That's cool. It can glow the color of any star that exists. Okay. So yellows and blues and reds. Whites. And stuff. Whites, yeah. Or it can be perfect darkness, like a black hole. Ooh. Right? I'll show you the dark side. It can uh, emit light up to 20 feet around you. Okay. Um, and you can uh, you use a movement action to like basically get rid of it. Sure. Like make it like not toggle look. it. Yeah. But that object will either turn into a piece of armor or a melee weapon of your choice. Oh. Now that is where your first split is going to happen. You either have to choose a melee weapon or armor that your character gets. Okay, and that's something that you choose when you choose the class and you don't get to change it. Correct. Okay. Now, uh, with the armor, you can make the armor look however you want. Okay. You can make it big, beefy armor. You can make it just like... Robes. Yeah, robes. Um, and it does not affect how you, like, what kind of bonuses you really? get. Really? Yeah. You can make it like a bath towel. Yeah. That's awesome. You can make it look like... Just like a thin crackling electricity, you know? But then it also has the same glowing or not glowing ability. Oh, okay. And it shares the same color as whatever your orb is around you. Okay. So if you chose perfect darkness, you yep. literally have robes of perfect darkness on you. That sounds super sick. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Ugh. Now with the armor, these are the bonuses that you're going to get. Plus one enhancement bonus to both kinetic armor class and energy armor class. This bonus increases to plus two at 10th level. At fifth level, you gain a five resistance to either fire or cold. This can be switched as a move action. This goes up by five at 10th and every five levels thereafter. Forming or dismissing solar armor is a move action. So at level 20, yep. you have a plus two enhancement bonus armor. Yep. 
and have resistance to cold or fire. Yep, that 20. you can toggle. Yeah, 20. That's, that's <laughs> a lot. Because you can pick the way that this looks, can you put the armor on top of something or is this just like the armor? Can it be, can the armor look like a bubble around me and I'm still wearing armor underneath it? Yes, but you don't gain the benefits of both. Okay. You get the benefits of one. Right, okay. So, so it's not cheesable. Yeah. Okay. The other thing about this is, and I thought this is weird, you can choose what the armor looks like, but you can only change what it looks like when you level. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> now, if you decide to manifest a weapon instead, you can still choose what the weapon looks like, and it doesn't really affect the way the weapon works, uh, but you still get that fun like flexibility and like control over the, the way your character behaves. Uh, but for example, if you manifest a longbow, you can't shoot arrows instead. You're still well, it's a melee specific weapon. You can still hit people with a longbow though. Well, I mean, Come on. I guess. You I can guess. manifest a rifle and hit people with the rifle. Yes, I guess. Like that would be for the memes. Like yeah, that's fun. The ideas that they usually go with are like hammers sure, or swords sure, or sure. like a giant fist that mm -hmm. manifests around your fist. That was one of the cool options. That's cool. Now, the, the funny thing about that is that you can make your weapon look like whatever, but then you also have to choose what type of damage it does. Yeah. So if you, so you choose- can have a fist that does slashing, slashing damage. damage. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Here are the properties for the weapon. Like we already said, this is going to form a melee weapon only. You can't pick a ranged one. You are proficient with this weapon. At first level, you pick what type of damage it does. You can pick from bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing. And you can change this when you level as a Solarian. The damage is 1d6 plus strength, and then at 6th, 9th, and 12th levels, the damage increases by 1d6. After 12th level, the damage increases by 1d6 every single level. Damn! <laughs> yeah, That's it's fun. It's got a nice, uh, it's got a nice curve. Curse one of these curves where it's going like this, and it's like, oh hey, <laughs> I'm going up now. Oh, well, I mean, I think um, at least a lot of people that play Starfinder have has is that. Melee is very difficult sure. in in this game because it makes sense. Like most given pe the most people have blasters yeah. and stuff like that, so it's like you have to run in, you have to be able to get. So that damage is really important to scale up sure. as quickly as possible. And I feel that we got that from the operative as well. Like yep. you remember that scale of yeah. that quick. It was doing weird things with the base and the max damage, like having them scale differently uh, and burst fully. Mm -hmm. Like at one point you just like, oh hey. Add two more dice this time. Like, whoa, okay. We're not even done with level one. Yep. This is the stellar mode. The stellar mode, bro. Sorry, I had to do that. So you didn't. Have to I do didn't. That. So um, this is a mechanic that I have not seen in any other RPG, and I really like it. And it's very complicated. And so I don't know if I like it because it's complicated or because it's good. Okay. So you have three modes that you can go into. Sure. Right? You have the photon mode. Okay. And the graviton mode. Okay. And unattuned. Okay. Those are the three options you Which have. Which is like neutral. Exactly. So you can start the combat in one of those three modes. Okay. Now if you start in either photon or graviton, you get one point in that direction. Okay. Okay. Think is uh, unattuned as zero and graviton as a negative and photon as a positive when you're sure. looking at math. So if you take graviton, you get a one point in that direction. Sure. The longer you spend in that, you get more points. So second round, if you decide to stay in that mode, you get two points. Now. Okay. Now if you decide to stay into it in a third round, you're considered to be fully attuned to that specific uh, uh, groups. When so you reach three. When you reach three specifically. Now if you reach, if you're at one or two, you can switch to either unattuned or the opposite. So if you're on graviton and you're at two, you can switch to photon and be photon one, right? Okay, so if I met, if I met graviton two and I switched to photon, it's always photon one. You start at the base, and, yes. And, and unattuned is just nothing. Yes. Okay. Now if you are fully attuned, you have, and you want to go to the other side. Yep. You have to go to unattuned for a round. Oh, okay. And then go up. So you're like, you have like a cooldown period. When, once you're fully attuned. Yeah, once you're at three specifically. Exactly. Okay. Now, there are a bunch of abilities that only work when you're fully attuned to one side or the other. Gotcha. And that's why it's important to okay. know when you're attuned. So this is like a balancing mechanic. This is something that's preventing you from spamming the abilities that they deem as needing that like uh, charge up delay. Yes. Okay. So for example, if you, mind you, you can, like if you have a Graviton ability yep. that works really well, you can 
charge up to Graviton, spend it, get dropped down to attuned, spend three rounds, use the ability, sure. get dropped down. You does you don't have to go from Graviton to Photon to Graviton yeah, to yeah, Photon. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't. Get, it, it's not trying to get you to be a balanced user of the class. It's not trying to get you to like spread out the abilities you use. It's just there to literally make the abilities less powerful. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing is, the two main modes that are not attuned, Photon and Graviton, have different bonuses when you're in them. Okay. With Graviton, you gain a plus one insight bonus to reflex saves. This bonus increases by one every nine Solarian levels you have. So that's just what you get as Graviton. Now with Photon, you gain plus one insight bonus to damage rolls, including damage rolls for your stellar powers. This bonus increases by one every six Solarian levels you have. Those aren't like game-changing bonuses, no. but they're cool. No, because you can just swift, like go back and forth between them. So yeah. I don't feel like they, they can be because it's just like for free. There's no yeah. like charge to move from one to the other. So it's, it's basically in what situation- Except for a little bit of time, basically. Well, I, but I mean, in combat wise, it's not a bonus action. It's, it's- Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just- It's oh, just rounds. Exactly. Now we forgot to talk about the bonuses you get while you're unattuned which are going to be nothing. No, usually you're in a <laughs> unattuned because you- You just blew somebody's head <laughs> off for your abilities. Here, here's the thing though, is that you can start combat unattuned or you can start combat in one, okay. level one of either, yeah. but uh, you can't, as soon as you're out of combat, you're back to unattuned. Yeah, and honestly that, the way that this works, because we were saying, oh, these bonuses aren't game changing. It's good that they're not game changing because you're always going to end up in unattuned. You don't get anything when you're unattuned. So you basically like effectively lost the bonuses. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps you in a sense. It's not gimping you when you're unattuned. Yep. Next, you're going to get stellar revelation. This is a level one talent. That's right. We're still level one. This is still level one. So with revelations, you get two revelations at level one. Mm -hmm. One of them has to be Photon, uh -huh. and one of them has to be Graviton. Balance. Uh, and you, it, it, funny you say that, it's actually extremely important, and there's an entire section about being unbalanced. Yep. So you have to choose one, uh, one of each, and yep. then throughout, you're going to gain additional two revelations. Now you can choose multiple of one side or the other after your first level, right. but you become unattuned, or you become uh, off balance, I should say, sorry. Yes. So when you become off balance and you have two of uh, of one side more than the other. So you can have one additional one. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? So yes. you can have like three photon revelations and two graviton. Yeah, but, but you it, can't have five and two. Exactly, that makes or sense. five and three, yeah. you can't do that. And when that happens, whatever side that you have more abilities for, it requires you to be attuned at four points. Oh. Previously, you couldn't go above yeah, yeah, yeah. three. Yeah. Now it requires you to go four. And the fact that you're going up to four points doesn't give you anything extra. It's literally just more time between uses of the abilities. Which like, maybe if you like, think about something really specific and find this like niche combination of abilities that's super powerful, it might be worth it, but I highly doubt it. And here's the thing is, you're considered to be attuned at one or two at the opposite end. Oh, okay. So it could make sense if your so graviton you like, abilities- you, you have a set of core abilities, a small number of core abilities on one side, and then you overload the other side with things that you don't necessarily care about. Mm -hmm. And then you just spend all your time going up one, casting down one, up one down. That's interesting. I can see why you think this is something that's like, Unique. Yeah, because <laughs> it is. I mean, I, I've never I, I seen can't this think of anything. Yeah. Um, so I've picked a couple of um, different uh, revelations that you can pick. Uh -huh. These are the first level revelations that you you basically have to pick because after first level they're uh, separated by levels. Okay. And since there's only two options and you can only pick two at first level, you get these. These two. are the two you get. The first thing we're looking at is black hole. Son, won't you come? This, Wash away the rain. This is a Graviton ability. Yes. When you're fully Graviton attuned as a standard action, you can pull any number of creatures within 20 feet of you closer. You choose which creatures are affected and which ones aren't. Each target must succeed a fortitude save or be pulled 10 feet closer to you. The range of this revelation and the distance pulled increase by five feet at fifth level and every four levels thereafter. Solid objects do not block this ability, but any creature that runs into a solid object ceases moving closer to you. 
Creatures moved by this ability do not provoke attacks of opportunity from the movement. After you use this revelation, you immediately become unattuned. Black Hole functions as a zenith revelation for the purposes of abilities that reference them. Um, that looks like an ability that is crowd control range based that scales. That's really good. I like it when that happens. Hey, check out our <clears throat> Artificer video. Link in the description. No, because it's going to happen on Friday and it hasn't happened yet. Oh. Um, go into the go future. To our channel. <laughs> just go to our channel. Just go to our channel. Subscribe. That? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Then your other option, which you're forced to take, is called Supernova, which is your photon ability. When you're fully photon attuned, as a standard action, you can deal 1d6 fire damage plus 1d6 additional fire damage per Solarian level to all creatures within 10 feet of you. A creature that succeeds a reflex save takes half damage. At 9th level, you increase the radius to 15 feet. And at 17th level, you can increase the radius to 20 feet. After you use this revelation, you are immediately become unattuned. Supernova functions as a zenith revelation for the purpose of, of abilities that reference them. Uh, I really like how this range scales optionally, because it says that you can expand the range. Um, that's nifty. The, the, I think the difference is because with Black Hole, you choose what targets are affected. Yeah. And with Supernova, you don't. And it doesn't say like that you can exclude your allies, right? Correct. So they're going to be taking the damage yes. too. So it's nice that you can say like, oh, I'm going to Supernova, but like a little one. Yeah. So now that we mentioned Zenith Revelations twice and haven't explained to you what it is yet, we're going to skip forward a little bit and talk about that first. You're going to get this ability at 9th and again at 17th level. With this, you're going to choose two Zenith Revelations uh, and one of them has to be of each different set. Right. Uh, I've chosen two examples, yeah. and I thought they were very similar to each other, and that's why I chose them. Mind you, uh, not all of them are like exact opposites of each sure. other. Yeah, yeah. Like black hole and supernova are almost opposites. Yeah. Pull people in, do damage out. Yeah. Like, but and, they don't all have that interplay. Like there's correct. diversity in the options that you have. Exactly. The first one's called Solar Acceleration. This is Photon. When you're fully Photon attuned, you can make a full attack action as a standard action. In addition, you and up to six allies within 30 feet are affected by haste for one minute after you use this revelation. At 17th level, the extra speed from the haste effect increases to 60 feet to a maximum of three times the creature's normal speed. Holy that's strong. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. You can make a full attack action as a standard action. Incredibly strong. You also, by the way, have haste one. That's strong. Oh, hey, by the way, once you reach level 17, 60 feet is nuts. The next one is time dilation, which is, of course, the graviton. Yes. When you're fully graviton attuned, you can make time pass more slowly for your enemies. As a standard action, you can project a graviton wave in a 30-foot cone. You can choose which creatures in the cone are affected and which ones aren't. Each target must succeed a fortitude saving throw or be affected by slow for a number of rounds equal to your Solarian level. At 17th level, even targets that succeed are slowed for one round. Either way, like the fact that you're like, cool, all my allies get haste or you fools are all slow. Oh, also, that duration gets insane. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. We literally just talked about how fights don't last 20 rounds, and at level 20, that lasts for 20 rounds. If you, if they survive if that, they survive long. that long, yeah. <laughs> I, I really love the fact that it's all about balance, the fact that there's benefits of, of going from one side to the other, yeah. and there's benefits of attuning to one side and not attuning to the other, and like, it seems like a class with a lot of build variety in the sense that you can focus really hard on one. You could focus on one core set of abilities on one specific side of the division between the two. Or you can be like a generalist, constantly hopping back and forth with your abilities on both sides. Yeah. No, and they I mean, both have their own benefits and drawbacks. I mean, just, just think about like being choosing the melee weapon, yeah. right? And just pulling people in hitting people, slowing people, yeah. you know, swapping back and forth between the two. I think it makes a very interesting game Very play. engaging play style, for sure, that's awesome. Remember when we were talking about skills earlier? No. Well, here you go. At third level, you're getting- Side reel. Influencer, where you're going to get- An a Instagram account. No. <laughs> you're going to get a select group of skills. Yep. They're going to be separated between 
photon and graviton. Mm. And you're going to get two skills that you're going to be able to add to this pool of skills. Nice. Now, you have to choose one from each. Yep. Outside of combat, you spend one minute focusing on either graviton or photon. Yep. And then after that one minute, you can then roll that skill that's in that, that group. So if you have, because later on at uh, 11th and 19th, you get an additional two. True. So at 19th level, you've got three and three. So you can, you go, okay, I'm gonna focus on Graviton. You get three additional skills that you can then roll for and add a D6 as an enhancement bonus to your D20 standard roll for it. So it's kind of like uh, not necessarily an in-combat skill enhancement thing because you have to spend a minute to like get into a place where you can use well, it? Well, specifically, you lose this connection oh. once you enter combat. Oh, so it's hindered twice. Yeah, so, so maybe maybe it's more to prevent you from using it when in like a super high stress situation that isn't necessarily combat. Like mm -hmm. the, the room is flooding and it's gonna be flooded in 59 seconds. And you're like, oh no, I can't use the thing because it's gonna take me a minute to do it. Somebody else has to do it. Yeah, the idea is, like how I feel it is, is that you're like, oh, today we're going to be adventuring. So I'm going to focus on Photon because I'm going to get a bonus 1d6 for any like skills that are going to be going and adventuring out. Yeah. But as soon as you eat, or either like knocked unconscious, go to sleep or take a long rest um, or um, enter combat, yeah. you lose those skill bonuses. So is this something that you can do mul multiple times per mm -hmm. day? So you, you can, it takes a minute. So I can do the photon, I can focus on photon and then get into a situation where I'm like, oh man, I should have been graviton and just spend a minute and swap over. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Hey, guess what? At level three, you're gonna get weapon specialization. Ah, uh, but it is different and it actually affects the class. Whoa. So if you have chosen to have the Solarian weapon as an option, okay. it is now considered to be an advanced melee weapon. Look, look, look. It actually makes sense for this class. Yeah. It does. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, the weapon specialization makes sense for a lot of the other classes. Yes, but I think that this makes more sense. It's, yeah. Like, if, if all the other ones didn't have it and this one did, I'd be okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my problem was never that it didn't make sense. Well, okay, that one time it was. <laughs> for most like classes, three times. For most classes, it's not like, oh, this doesn't make sense. For most classes, it's like, hey, do something uh, different, like flavorful. And just let me pick weapon specialization when I get there. Just please, come on. At level seven, you get flashing strike. Get your mind out of the gutter. It's not the dirty thing you're thinking about. If you're making multiple melee attacks only on your round, instead of taking a minus four multiple attack penalty, you take a minus three multiple attack penalty, which is cool and definitely reinforces the fact that this is a melee character. Again. This one's weird. <laughs> Cause it, okay, this is level 13. I'm gonna be looking down at the screen down here so that I can make sure, abundantly sure, that I am not misleading you. This is level 13, called Solarian's Onslaught. Listen. When making a full attack, you can make up to three attacks instead of two attacks. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You take a minus six penalty to these attacks instead of a minus four penalty. Record, record stretch mm -hmm. noise. Uh, we just gained a feature previously at level seven mm -hmm. that reduced the bone or the the, the penalty, penalty from four to three. Mm -hmm. So w keep reading, keep reading. Okay, all right. If you have the flashing strikes class feature, which you do, which we do, <laughs> is there a way that we don't? Is there a way that we have the level thirteen Solarian onslaught feature without having the level seven Solarian onslaught feature? I don't understand how that's a thing. Uh, I, I'm really nervous to say if you know how that's a thing, let me know down in the comments because I feel like it's either going to be uh, incredibly complicated and something that would nobody would ever do or it's gonna be something so simple that I will cry in bed at my own stupidity. Um, if, it's, if it's neither of those things, let me know down in the comments how you do it. As I was saying, if you have the flashing strikes class feature, you instead take a minus five penalty to these attacks as long as they're all melee attacks. Oh. It's if you're not making melee attacks. That's the like thing. Right? Yeah, but 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 why would you do that? Is what, my no, but why would you start off by saying if you have the flashing strike class feature, you instead yeah. take a minus five yeah, yeah. instead of yeah, yeah. a minus like it should just say it if it should say with melee weapons this drops. if you are using a melee weapon or if you're making only melee attacks. It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to reiterate. It's just weird. 
It's very important what words you choose. Choose less of them. Especially <laughs> in, in these kinds of games mm -hmm. when literally the whole thing is words. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is words and little plastic pieces, yeah. but mostly words. At 20th level, you're going to get Stellar Paragon. As a move action, you can increase or decrease light by one step within 30 feet of you. You can become attuned in two rounds instead of three, or you can spend one resolve point to become attuned on your first round in combat. Or you can spend one resolve point to move over and have the level of attunement from one mode to the other. That's good. Game changing, very powerful within the fantasy. Removes the entire limitation, well, removes one very large facet of limitation of the attunement thing by spending a resource. Like, I've never, I've never wanted a different level 20 ability less. That's, that's great. Now, after you've gone through this class with me, do you see why I'm kind of like, ooh, mechanics, mm -hmm. Solarian, mechanics, Solarian, yep, like, yep, yep. it's a unique mechanic, yep. and I, I feel that this would be a very bad class for new. Oh, fuck <laughs> yes. I've never seen a less noob-friendly class ever. There's so much stuff you have to keep track of. It's bananas, but for an experienced role player, for people who fucking love the min-max because there's so many layers to this. Like, most classes just, what am I gonna pick? This is like, what am I gonna pick? And then what side of the balance is it on? And how many things am I picking on each side of the balance? And how does that affect my play style? And am I going for like a, a balanced build or am I going for like a one side or another side build? And is it to have the versatility of having a lot of things on this side? Or is it to have the simplicity of only having to spend this much amount of time, a, a shorter amount of time to attune to the side that I'm using primarily? There are layers upon layers to this shit, and it feels strong and it doesn't feel broken. And and it's really cool. That's you, really great. Do you hear that sound? Yeah, what, what is it? That's the sound number crunching. Ooh. Oh, oh. I love it. Oh. Ugh. I just heard somebody open Excel. Oh. <laughs> All right, we obviously like that yes, a bunch. Yes, yes. What about you? Do you think it's cool or do you think it's too complicated? I honestly would totally get that opinion. Maybe it's not the right class for everybody. Let us know down in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts. While you're down there, hit the like button if you liked the video. Hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we post new content. And then after you're done with all that shit, find us on Twitter. You can get me at KrugQT. You can talk to me on Twitter at IndigoQT, or you can talk to both of us on any of the following social medias that are down below. We've been Game Gorgon. We'll see y'all later.